Harris, and welcome back to Weekday Wind Down with the Word, where we are reading through the book of Leviticus. And today we will be reading the 26th chapter of Leviticus in the NLT version. This chapter includes blessings for obedience as well as punishment for disobedience. So without further delay, let's start reading. Blessings for obedience. Do not make idols or set up carved images or carved pillows or sculpture stones in your land so you may worship them. I am the Lord your God. You must keep my seventh day of rest and show reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you the seasonal rains. The land will then yield its crop, and the trees of the field will produce their fruit. Your threshing seasons will overlap with the grape harvest, and the grape harvest will overlap with the seasons of planting grain. You will eat your field and live securely in your own land. I will give you peace in the land, and you will be able to sleep with no cause for fear. I will rid the land of wild animals and keep your enemies out of your land. In fact, you will chase down your enemies and slaughter them with your swords. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you can chase ten thousand. All of your enemies will fall beneath your sword. I will look favorably upon you, making you fertile and multiplying your people, and I will fulfill my covenant with you. You will have such a surplus of crops that you will need to clear out the old grain to make room for the new harvest. I will live among you, and I will not despise you. I will walk among you. I will be your God, and you will be my people. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt, so you would no longer be their slaves. I broke the yoke of slavery from your neck, so you can walk with your head held high. Punishment for disobedience. However, if you do not listen to me or obey all these commands, and if you break my covenant by rejecting my decrees, treating my regulations with contempt, and refusing to obey my commands, I will punish you. I will bring sudden terrors upon you, wasting diseases and burning fevers that will cause your eyes to fail and your life to ebb away. You will plant your crops in vain because your enemies will eat them. I will turn against you and you will be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will run even when no one is chasing you. And if, in spite of all of this, you still obey me, I will punish you seven times over for your sins. I will break your proud spirit by making the skies of unyielding as iron and the earth as hard as bronze. And your work will be for nothing, for your land will yield no crops and your trees will bear no fruit. If even then you remain hostile towards me and refuse to obey me, I will inflict disaster on you seven times over for your sins. I will send wild animals that will rob you of your children and destroy your livestock. Your numbers will dwindle and your roads will be deserted. And if you fail to learn the lessons and continue your hostility towards me, then I myself will be hostile towards you. I will personally strike you with calamity seven times over your sins. I will send armies against you to carry out the curse of the covenant you have broken. When you run to your towns for safety, I will send a plague to destroy you there, and you will be handed over to your enemies. I will destroy your food supply so that ten women will need only one oven to bake bread for their families. They will ration your food by weight, and though you have food to eat, you will not be satisfied. If, in spite of all of this, you still refuse to listen and still remain hostile towards me, then I will give full vent to my hostility. I myself will punish you seven times over your sin. Then you will eat the flesh of your own sons and daughters. I will destroy your pagan shrines and knock down your places of worship. 
I will leave your lifeless corpses piled on top of your lifeless idols, and I will despise you. I will make your cities desolate and destroy your places of pagan worship. I will take no pleasure in your offerings. That should be a pleasing aroma to me. Yes, I myself will devastate your land, and your enemies who come to occupy it will be appalled at what they see. I will scatter you among the nations and bring out my sword against you. Your land will become desolate and your cities will lie in ruin. Then at last the land will enjoy its neglected Sabbath years as it lies desolate while you are in exile in the land of your enemies. Then the land will finally rest and enjoy the Sabbaths it missed. As long as the land lies in ruin, it will enjoy the rest you never allowed it to take every seventh year while you lived in it. And for those of you who survive, I will demoralize you in the land of your enemies. You will live in such fear that the sound of a leaf driven by the wind will send you fleeing. You will run as though fleeing from a sword, and you will fall even when no one pursues you. Though no one is chasing you, you will stumble over each other as though fleeing from a sword. You will have no power to stand up against your enemies. You will die among the foreign nations and be devoured in the land of your enemies. Those of you who survive will waste away in your enemy's land because of their sins and the sins of their ancestors. But at last, my people will confess their sins and the sins of their ancestors for betraying me and being hostile towards me. When I have turned their hostility back on them and brought them out of the land of their enemies, then, at last, their stubborn hearts will be humble and they will pay for their sins. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I will remember the land, for the land must be abandoned to enjoy its years of Sabbath rest as it lies deserted. At last, the people will pay for their sins, for they have continually rejected my regulations and despised my decrees. But despite all this, I will not utterly reject or despise them while they are in exile in the land of their enemies. I will not cancel my covenant with them by wiping them out, for I am the Lord their God. For their sake, I will remember my ancient covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of all the nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, regulations, and instructions that the Lord gave through Moses on Mount Sinai as evidence of the relationship between himself and the Israelites. And that concludes the reading of Leviticus 26 in the NLT version. So as I read this, I just thought about how um, in, in, mo in a lot of cases in the Word of God, you know, uh, it talks about, you know, how, um, you know, things are very transitional. You know, um, I just think about Psalms 1. You know, if we delight ourselves in the Word, you know, what we will reap from that, you know, we will be like a tree planted by the river of water that, you know, we are watered whenever, you know, whenever and how much we need, you know. And there's a lot of scriptures throughout the Bible that's very transitional. If we do one thing, God would do one thing, you know. And so that's what this chapter makes me think of. You know, if they're disobedient, they continue in their disobedience, they're going to be punished for it. But if they continue in um, completing the commands and following the Lord's way, then they will be rewarded. And so um, it just made me think of that, you know, um, how a lot of things are transitional. So we want to be mindful of that. But my time is almost up. Please make sure you put in the comments below what you thought about this chapter. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, and again, thank you once again for listening.